Truth be told, I don't like filming videos that are just pretty much a negative review of an entire brand. I don't like it because I know there's always going to be someone watching who has had a great experience with the brand. Maybe it's their favorite brand in the entire world and yet I gotta sit behind my camera and say, absolutely nothing worked out for me. But I've always wanted this to be an honest channel and because of that I feel like I need to not only bring you you know, great findings, positive experiences, but also tell you when things didn't go for me. So in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing Burt's Bees as best I can and tell you why I quit using these products. The backstory of this is I was planning to include this in a two week trial. I had put up a poll in the community tab where I asked what you guys want to see me trial and drugstore natural skincare did win. So I figured I would test out Burt's Bees Pacifica and Andalou Naturals. I don't know if I'm saying that yet correctly, but I will when I review it. I tried Burt's Bees cleansing gloss before. I thought I would give them another shot. It was the exact same experience. I kept trying every other product, same exact circumstances as the last time. It just irritates my skin. This is my skin today after just using a wipe last night. And you can see I've got kind of red patchiness. I've got irritation. I'm not gonna push myself through this trial. I've <laughs> We all know I've made that mistake in the past and I'd really rather just tell you why I quit a brand rather than have to edit out scenes of me crying around how I damaged my face. You all know that's what I did. Let's, let's have only one crying video a year on this channel. Maybe only one forever. That sounds great actually. But what I wanna do in this video, and I see I'm already rambling, so I will make sure that in the description box I have a timestamp for the reviews if you wanna just skip to that. I'll try to be considerate for those of you that only wanna see that. But before we get into that, I really wanna talk about why I suspect this brand was a problem for me. And not just for me, because when I looked at the reviews for every one of these products, there is a giant chunk of people who are reporting signs of irritation, whether they know that's what it is or not, that is exactly what they are describing. And I wanna kind of break down today what is in Burt's Bees products that could be doing that. Burt's Bees is a drugstore brand that has a natural focus. Not everything is 100% natural, but you'll see, you know, 99.1% natural on this. It's definitely more natural then most products on the shelves, lots of natural ingredients from plants, all of which sounds really good in theory, but there is a giant problem with relying on natural as safe. I feel like this is kind of intuitive, but I'm going to explain it. There's two different ways in which natural products could be a problem. One is the obvious allergy. You know, a lot of people can eat peanuts and they have no problem whatsoever getting lots of nutrition from them. Peanuts are fantastic for most people, but some people have a severe allergy to peanuts such that if they breathe in peanuts, they will end up in the ER. I've known people like that, it's serious. And it's a case of something being great for some people, but being horrible for others solely because of allergy. And we also have ingredients in nature that are just poisonous. You aren't gonna have a good time if you roll in poison ivy, and we all know that, but is poison ivy 100% natural? It sure is. Now, in the case of Burt's Bees, most of the ingredients are listed very clearly on the back so that if you have any kind of an allergy to something in here, you would know to avoid it. So currently I'm looking at the scrub. I can see that it has coconut oil in it. Just to give you an example, if I had an allergy to it, I would say, okay, I can't use that. It's got coconut oil. But there is another problem with Burt's Bees products and that is that little word, parfum fragrance. That ingredient does not signify one ingredient within it. It could be up to 5,000 chemicals, none of which have to be listed. And the reason for this is because of a little act that was passed in the year 1966 that determined that fragrance is a trade secret and therefore it does not have to be listed in the ingredients. For over 50 years, fragrance has been protected, but there's such a problem with this if you ask me, because sure, fine, don't let me know what's in a product that I spray on my wrists. It's not that big of a deal, right? But now we're using fragrance in skincare, in products that are meant to not only sit on top of your skin, but work deeply into your skin and make changes in your skin. And this is my problem. We are pushing all of these potential ingredients deep into our skin and we don't know what they are. And it's so difficult because a lot of times I use products that contain fragrance and I have no problems whatsoever. A perfect example of this being my Benefit Total Moisture. It has a very light scent, doesn't bother me, 
doesn't mean it won't bother everybody, but I can never actually break down, you know, what could be a potential irritant because I don't know. So when it comes to Burt's Bees products, I'm most inclined to thinking that there probably is something hidden within that word that is causing a problem for me. And whatever it is, it seems to be in pretty much every product that I've tried. Before someone says it, because I know someone's already thinking it, yes, all of these products do say that the fragrance is natural, but we've already covered that. Natural doesn't always mean safe. It could very clearly include a natural allergen. And again, I think that's what it is because the, if you go back, read those reviews, sort them by one star, a lot of the problems that people report are classic signs of allergy. We've got people reporting rashes. We've got people reporting rashes with the lip balm. This is something that to me really shows there is something in here that seems to be an allergen for kind of a lot of people, myself included, and I'm not even that sensitive. All right, we're gonna go through the products now. We're gonna do worst to best. I know, I'm asking for trouble. I am just asking for dislikes with this video, I know. But anyway, my least favorite product from Burt's Bees is absolutely these facial cleansing towels. These are horrible on my skin. It's $5.99 for 30 of these, which sounds like a great price. If you can use them, this only has a three-star review because a lot of people, especially with this product, have reported irritation. My experience with using these cleansing cloths is that every time they touch my skin, it's like instant shooting pain, which is not at all what skincare should do. Certain ingredients do kind of tingle, like vitamin C, uh, glycolic, but a cleansing cloth, it shouldn't tingle. It's a really bad sign that something is wrong. And with this having a really quite innocuous ingredients list, aside from that word fragrance, this is why I think that something in Burt's Bees fragrance is a problem. Next up for me is the Complete Nourishment Facial Oil. I, I don't think this is even really worth it. This is $19.99 for half ounce, which is really expensive. That's almost getting to mid-range pricing if you break it down. You can buy an ounce of rosehip oil from The Ordinary for under $10, and that's the main ingredient here, but for whatever reason, this, while not really staining my skin, this was actually one of the less problematic uh, products for me from Burt's Bees. It stinks. <laughs> How are you gonna put fragrance in here that makes this product smell absolutely horrendous? This one's pretty simple for me. I just didn't enjoy using it. You smell it on your face all day long, and I think it's overpriced for the amount you get. The facial cleansing oil is $15.99 for six ounces, which I guess that's, I, I can't be too mad at the price of this one, but I can't stand using it, even though it works nicely. If this touches your eyes, and this is a product that you know you use to take things like eyeshadow and mascara off, if it gets in your eyes, it is so painful. That was definitely the number one complaint with this when I was reading other people's reviews as well. I mean, you're just, you're going to get cleansing oil in your eyes. And you might experience a little bit of cloudiness when this happens. It's definitely common when oil gets in your eyes, you kind of get blurry vision. But it should come out very quickly and it shouldn't sting. And I just can't recommend this because it stings your eyes. Or, you know, it stung my eyes. Hopefully it doesn't sting other people's, but that's not what it seemed like in the reviews. All right, next I'm going to say the lip balm. This is the Coconut and Pear one. I mean, I knew I wasn't going to love this because I like thick lip balms, but I figured I would try it anyway. And it's just really disappointing for me. It's $3.49 for 0.15 ounces. So that's the kind of price where, you know, you're just out of lip balm. This is the kind of thing you might pick up in store. Like, oh, I really need lip balm right now. Let me just grab that cheap one, right? Have we all been in this situation? But it freaked me out how many people in the reviews were reporting serious side effects with this. I mean, we absolutely have people in the reviews. You can go and read these where people are saying they had a rash on their lips. It was spreading to the rest of their face the more they used it, so they, they stopped using it. And get this, this one is 100% natural. So again, you know, natural does not always mean safe. Can we not tell SCA that my favorite product from Burt's Bees was the deep pore scrub? Please don't tell them. This is $9.49 for four ounces. Not a bad price, but it's a really harsh scrub. A lot of people in the reviews for this were saying it felt like cutting their face with little pieces of shell. Yeah, that's kind of what these kind of scrubs are. But you know, personally, I don't wanna come too hard for these products because I think that some people might actually enjoy them. I just hope that people don't overuse these. I definitely think these very harsh exfoliants 
are intense and I would not recommend them more than twice a week personally. The generally accepted wisdom on this topic these days is to use chemical exfoliants instead of physical, but I really do respect everybody's stance and I know some people like this type of product. It wasn't the worst product that I've ever tried. It was actually kind of nice and somehow didn't irritate my skin. It's the only one out of everything that didn't irritate my skin is the product that is most likely the most irritating for most people. Life is irony. Honestly, I'm gonna finish this product off by exfoliating my elbows and my knees with it. Great use for something like this, but I'm not gonna put it on my face because it's a bit its a bit much, it's a bit much. So, you know, my apologies that this is kind of a negative video and my apologies that it's not the most in-depth that I've ever done of a brand, but hopefully it's still helpful to you guys. Please share your experiences in the comments. I always try to emphasize this because my videos are my experience and my opinion with the products and they don't represent everybody. Even if I do try to bring in other people's reviews, it's still just me talking about what happened to me. And I hope you guys were able to enjoy this video. Please stay tuned. The rest of the drugstore skincare brands will be up in about a week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time.